We all need a savior. And his name is Jesus. You need Jesus tonight. Jesus wants to to get your heart here tonight and he wants to walk with you after this meeting he wants to walk hand in hand with you are you happy the life of reinhard bonker is a shining example of what god can do with one man completely consecrated to him his heart burned for the salvation of the continent of africa and he followed that passion his whole life without wavering. He was also a man of marked integrity. There was never a hint or whisper of any scandal. He said that as a young boy he had prayed, Lord, help me to mind in the beginning what matters in the end. When one looks back on the life of this spiritual giant, there is an overwhelming sense of awe and gratitude for a life that made such a massive impact on the world. Reinhard Bonker was known as a man of deep humility. Though his platform was worldwide, he took time for the one. He didn't claim any special status, but saw himself as a servant. He gave his life serving the poor in Africa and around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Reinhard would often say to the crowds, if God can use Bonker, he can use you 10 times. In other words, he explained that when God calls, it's not so much about your ability, it's more about your availability to his voice. His advice was, simply say yes, then step by step, day by day, do your very best to obediently follow his lead. I was dreaming. I saw a huge map of Africa. And then the next thing was, Africa became washed in the precious blood of Jesus, from south to north and from west to east. And I heard a voice cry. That voice was something extraordinary. I, I'm, I'm sure it was the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he cried, Africa shall be saved was like a thunder. I woke up. I said, oh, that is wonderful. The Holy Spirit was in the bedroom. I felt the anointing. Reinhard grew up as the overlooked child in his family. God used that pain to sensitize his heart to the overlooked people of the world. He knew God loved everyone, including those whose names no one will ever celebrate. He had a special love for Africa, where he lived for many years and where the majority of his ministry was focused. The son of a pastor, Reinhard Bonker gave his life to the Lord at age nine and heard the call to the mission field before he was even a teenager. After attending Bible College in Wales, he led people to Christ through evangelistic outreaches on the streets of Germany and then planted a church from the new converts. He pastored that church for several years before following his call to Africa. He began in Southern Africa as a missionary. It was there in the small mountainous kingdom of Lesotho that God placed upon his heart the vision of the continent of Africa washed in the precious blood of Jesus. An entire continent from Cape Town to Cairo and from Dakar to Djibouti that needed to be reached and to hear the proclamation of the signs following gospel. He began holding meetings in a tent that accommodated just 800 people. As attendance increased, larger and larger tents had to be built until finally in 1984, he commissioned the construction of the world's largest mobile structure at the time, a tent capable of seating 34,000 people. Soon, attendance at his meetings even exceeded the capacity of this huge structure, and he began open-air gospel campaigns with an initial gathering of more than 150,000 people. The name above every, every, every other name. It is the powerful name. The name of Jesus.
Reinhard was often asked how he reached such a fantastic level of success in ministry. His response was that no amount of technique or expertise can account for it. He often reflected on his humble beginnings. He began in ministry as what he described as a zero, standing on a street corner with an accordion. In those early days, he simply did what he could without much fruit to show for it. But Reinhard had a burning passion to reach multitudes for Jesus. He cried out to God for more and was determined to believe God for all of Africa to be saved. He kept going forward until the breakthrough came after 100 years of prayer for revival by godly generations, a season of harvest had arrived. It came with a flood of salvations and miracles, like another chapter being written in the book of Acts. This unprecedented harvest is not merely a matter of historical record. The results are ongoing. More than a decade before his death, Reinhard Bonker passed the baton to a young man who he had mentored by the name of Daniel Kalender. As Evangelist Bonker is saying bye-bye uh, to uh, the Crusades in Africa, Evangelist Daniel Kalender uh, has already taken up the mantle, preaching the gospel for the past 13 years with, 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 with Sifan. And so he also take it up and continue the preaching the gospel all over um, Nigeria and all over Africa. Daniel, a fifth generation preacher's kid, was also called to Africa as a boy, just as Bonka had been. All his life, he knew that Africa was his heavenly assignment. In his teens, Daniel was powerfully touched by the Holy Spirit during a move of God in Pensacola, Florida, known as the Brownsville Revival. He came away with a burning call to evangelize the nations. Reinhardt saw the call on Daniel's life and believed that he was one of the next generation's movers and shakers in the kingdom of God. Reinhardt said that the Lord spoke to him about Daniel, saying the anointed must be appointed. In obedience to that word, Reinhardt appointed Kalenda as his successor. Hanging on the cross, my friends, he took the punishment for your sins and the punishment for my sins. The results were amazing. The crowds continued to pour into the Crusades and mighty miracles took place. It was evident to all that God's grace and favor was upon the whole ministry. Even at the time of Reinhardt's death, Daniel was in Nigeria with the Christ for All Nations team preaching the gospel at a massive Seafan crusade. Daniel said, I can think of no greater way to honor one of the greatest evangelists that has ever lived than laboring here in Africa, preaching the gospel and leading multitudes into the arms of Jesus. If you will do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, He will take care of you. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power like a mighty rushing wind. The Holy Spirit will fill you. Would you meet Jesus? He comes to live on the inside of you. And when Jesus comes to live on the inside of you, he makes you a new creation. You're gonna pick up a Bible. You're gonna become a preacher of the gospel. Your life will change tonight in Jesus' name. How does it feel, Mama? I feel very fine. Hallelujah! I see you now. And you are handsome, Ma! Now I know she's been healed. Our great father, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. Earlier today, he graduated to heaven. And it's amazing that it happened while we were right here in Ottawa Kitty. Even though my heart is sad that he is gone, I have great joy because today he is in heaven with Jesus. Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke had one purpose in his life. He wanted to lead people into the arms of Jesus. One day you will meet him in heaven. Will you meet him there? 
I thank you for the life of Reinhard Bonnke. And Lord, I pray that now that he has gone to his eternal reward, Lord, I pray that you would raise up millions of people in his place. And Lord, I declare over Nigeria as he did so many times, I declare it prophetically and through faith that Africa shall be saved in Jesus' name. Reinhardt's energy was infectious. He said, a man of faith has no reverse gear. He lived with an awareness of the eternal significance of his assignment and worked to redeem every moment, preaching the gospel and building God's kingdom. The ministry increased the number of crusades held per year in Africa and also began to branch out to Asia, holding one crusade per year in that part of the world. Crusades followed in Malaysia, the Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, India, and South America. Each event resulted in tens of thousands receiving Jesus Christ as their savior, and multitudes were healed and delivered from demon forces. As news of what God was doing went ahead of the team, the reception in many places began to change. Some closed their doors to the prospect of such active Christianity but many more opened up gladly. People in high places also began to take note of the huge crowds and the positive impact that the gospel was having. And Reinhard Bonker soon found that he was being asked to meet state presidents and to address houses of parliament. Many leading national figures opened their own hearts to the message of the gospel while meeting privately with Bonker. He personally met with 14 different state presidents in Africa and counted several of them as personal friends. Muhammadu Buhari, the Muslim president of Nigeria, said of Bonka's death that it was a great loss to Nigeria, Africa, and the entire world, adding that Bonka strongly accentuated the message of Jesus Christ and his vision and zeal for the salvation of souls clearly helped the world in understanding the power of love and kindness as a universal language. Reinhard Bonker's goal was to use every opportunity, by every possible means, to reach and save the lost. He had a burning passion for the gospel, a vision for the continent of Africa, and a heart for the nations of the world. He's a friend of God to the world. He's a real deal. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of passion. He's a man of power. He's a friend of God. He's an evangelist. I don't think there's a man on the planet that I respect more than Reinhard Bonnke. The impact of his life, oh my goodness, it's tidal waves of impact on everyone I know. Everyone who knows him, anyone who's been exposed to, to his ministry, to his life, his, uh, his heart for people, my goodness, it, uh, it's sobering. You know, Reinhard Bonnke was a man of incredible vision, not only for his own life and his own ministry, but also for the next generation. And that's why, even though Reinhard Bonnke has gone to be with the Lord, the crusades continue and the ministry continues and the souls continue to come into the kingdom. That's why we're still here in Africa preaching the gospel today, even though Reinhardt has already gone to his eternal reward. And in fact, this is nothing new. We have been reaping this harvest uh, in Africa for the last five, six years. Reinhardt hasn't been here preaching, but the Lord has been gracious and he's allowed this to continue on to the next generation. Reinhardt used to always say to me, nothing diminishes in God. And what he meant by that is in God's will and in God's heart, it's always intended to go higher. It's always supposed to go to the next level. Nothing is supposed to retreat or go backwards, but we go forward in Jesus' name. As part of the ministry's discipleship training program, over 185.5 million copies of CFAN books and booklets have been published in 103 languages and printed in 55 countries. Millions of books have been freely seeded throughout the world. 
CFAN has used every means at its disposal to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, including television, all forms of digital media, printed literature, and live events, which include some of the largest gatherings of human beings in world history. I remember the very first time I heard Reinhard Bonnke speak. I was absolutely riveted. We had one son and John, I grabbed a hold of his books and I remember reading this man who said, give me souls or I die. And I thought, I want that kind yeah. of passion. Yeah. And Reinhard Bunke just in, impacted my life in a profound way. He is one of my heroes. Uh, he has a great reward, I know, but he gave me a passion for souls, for lost souls. And the other thing was to walk in integrity, the humility that this man walked in was profound. I want to emulate that and walk in more of that the older I get. So on behalf of John and Lisa, we love you, Reinhardt, and we hope you're enjoying your reward with Jesus. Bueno, yo creo que Reinhard Bonke para el mundo es un mensajero de las buenas nuevas, en primer lugar. En segundo lugar, es un hombre que permitió que se, abriese, se abrieran puertas para la predicación del Evangelio en lugares que parecían imposible y es eh, para el mundo hoy es un hombre que ha marcado una generación. At the end of his life, he said it's like a plane that hits the runway. That plane is going faster right before it lifts off. And so Reinhardt is he's the same. That what you see, full of humility, full of honor, full of respect, full of integrity. He doesn't have any secrets or closets. He is a man that is full of Jesus, that's anointed by the Holy Ghost. And he is not ashamed to pass the torch. And he would say, run and run well. It took me eight years to meet Pastor Bonke. And I'll never forget, Reverend Peter Von Beck came and asked me, where are you from? I said, are you from Africa? I said, yes. What do you want? And I said, I want Pastor Bonke to lay hands on me. And Pastor Bonke walked down the stairs. He came, laid hands on me, and my life from that very moment was changed and transformed. And I went back home. A ministry was birthed. We started with 16,000 people. We ended up in the park where he preached for the very first time in Kenya. And for 14 years, I preached the gospel of Jesus Christ on the same ground with thousands and thousands of people attending every second Sunday of every month. Well, Bobby and I and everybody at Hillsong Church are so grateful for the life of evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. I know that there will be celebrations from people universally across the world. What an incredible life. I know for Bobby and I, our personal contact with Reinhardt was always so impacting. You could never have a conversation with him for more than a few moments before he would come back to the gospel, to the kingdom of God, and of course, evangelizing the world. We know how much he loved Europe, but he also loved people everywhere. And the power in his ministry, the supernatural element, well, what a great, great celebration it is today when you think about his impact on so many, literally populating heaven. And now he is part of heaven's population and we couldn't be happier for him. We wish the family a great heartfelt uh, prayers and we just really pray for all of you that we'll never forget this life and be inspired, all of us, to do even more for the kingdom of God ourselves. With Jesus for us, who could be against us? I'm telling you, Brother Reinhardt was one of the greatest preachers I've ever heard. John loved him so much, and we did too. He did so much for people all over the world. And I was thinking about when he gets to heaven, when he got to heaven, I think Jesus said to him, very well done, my good and faithful servant. Because I know there were times when he didn't feel like preaching, but he went and preached. And I think when he got to heaven, there were so many people. There are so many people in heaven that he won to Jesus and, and a, a lot of them would have been there if he hadn't prayed for them and they got healed. But he was such a great man. Jesus said, very well done. Not just well done, very well done, my good and faithful servant. It's often said that when you get to know somebody who is a high profile figure or a famous person, you become disappointed the more familiar you get with them, 
the less you're impressed by them, and thus the old adage that familiarity breeds contempt. But when it comes to Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, I experienced the exact opposite. When I was a, young, a very young man, I, I saw him from a distance and I admired him and I appreciated his ministry. But the closer that I got to him as I got older, the more I loved him and the more I respected him and the more I was amazed by the kind of man that he was because he wasn't just a great man of God on the platform when there was a microphone in his hand. He was a great man of God sitting at the table talking, walking through the mall, going through the airport. Just in his normal life, he was a man of generosity. He was a man of integrity. He was a man of true passion for God and a love for people. That was really something extraordinary, something I've never seen in anyone else. I think it's safe to say that Reinhard Bonnke was one of the greatest men of our generation. And I consider it incredible honor that I had the privilege to be so close to him and to be able to serve him in his life and in his ministry. Over 45 years ago, as a young missionary in Africa, Reinhardt sometimes preached to tiny gatherings. He said that on one occasion, he traveled a whole day to reach a village and only five people attended his evangelistic meeting. But through unwavering perseverance and unquestioning obedience to the call of God, Reinhard eventually found himself leading a movement that resulted in more than 79 million documented decisions for Christ. God will not allow anyone to thwart him and his plans. No, he uh, puts people out of the way and puts people in the way, but those who are willing to go that way. I felt God could overnight raise anyone, anyone, anyone else to do that job. But I was so keen to go with him and see nations uh, shaken for Jesus. In his very first gospel campaign, God gave Reinhard a supernatural vision. He saw what looked like a mighty wave of crystal clear water roll across the stadium from one side to the other. As it moved, everyone under it was dramatically filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a mass baptism in the Holy Spirit. Reinhard wept like a boy and realized that this outpouring of the Spirit is what was needed to break the devil's back in Africa. Right there, he determined that he would move across Africa with the power of the gospel. He reasoned that if God can do that to 10,000 people, he could do it to 450 million. Today, we no longer say Africa shall be saved. Instead, we say Africa is being saved as the miracle continues into the next generation. a housewife, a grocery clerk, a policeman, a teacher, a student, a secretary, a delivery person, a fry cook, a pastor, an executive. Look in the mirror. The Great Commission is for you. If you belong to Jesus, God is preparing a platform for you. He will gather your crowd, great or small, from one lost soul to a desperate crowd of millions. It does not matter. The message is the same. If you know Jesus, you know it as well as I do. We are running stride for stride now. Here is the button. Take it and run your race. Can you see the day of harvest that lies before you? The revival flame is igniting across the southern hemisphere, once called the third world and now into India, China, and the ocean islands. Christ is striding through the earth. Mere religious forces have no answer for him. He is our message. Scoffers say, why does the African harvest not happen in Europe or America? I say, why not in Europe and America? 
the ground is never too hardened. Africa for two centuries did not yield a harvest, though the noblest of God's servants sowed the seed there. The dark continent became the graveyard of Christian workers more difficult than America or Europe today. But in our time, we have seen the tide shift, as it has also shifted in South America and the Orient. If the tide can shift there, it can also rise like a great tsunami to overflow America and Europe once again. I believe it. Dare to believe it with me.